Let's face it, bugs can be pests. Some sneak into our homes, some eat our homes, and some try to turn us into their home. Yikes. Here are 11 bugs that we think are pests. One, fleas. Fleas are blood-feasting insects that like to live on warm-blooded animals. They seem to prefer to live on humans, cats, dogs, opossums, rats, and other rodents. Have you ever heard someone say, my dog has fleas? They're talking about these bad buggies inhabiting their poor pet. Fleas do not fly. Instead, they jump from one place to another. Fleas can jump as high as 18 centimeters vertically, which is 150 times their own height. If we could do this, we could leap over skyscrapers. Fleas are one of the best known jumpers of animals. That's impressive, but I still don't like them. Fleas are about two millimeters long. They're pretty tiny and hard to spot, especially among fur. They're dark, reddish brown in color, and are flat. Not only do these mean fleas drink blood, they can also spread disease. Their saliva can cause allergic reactions. That's why flea bites are so itchy. Yikes! You and your pets can avoid becoming a flea home by using flea treatments and baths, along with vacuuming. Stay away, fleas! 2. Housefly This fly is the housefly. I'm sure you've seen a housefly or two in your house. This species is always found near humans. They especially like to live on farms. They need meat, garbage, and feces to procreate. That's right, poop. I know this sounds really weird, so let me explain. The female housefly lays about 9,000 eggs in her lifetime. She lays eggs in batches of around 100 at a time. She lays them on rotting meat, garbage, and fecal matter. That's poop. Within a day of laying her eggs, larvae, also known as maggots, hatch from the eggs. They eat the meat, garbage, and feces. Yep, it's gross. After 14 to 36 hours of feasting, the maggots go into a cold, dry place and turn into pupae. Pupa is the life stage of an insect between the immature and mature stages. In pupae, the housefly is brownish red and eight millimeters long. From this stage, they emerge into adult flies. Once they are adult flies, they do not grow. So if you ever see a small fly, that means that fly didn't get enough food as a larva. In other words, they didn't eat enough garbage. There are believed to be 1 million species of flies, but only 150,000 have been identified. Scientists have named about 85,000 of them. Flies' most obvious distinction from other insects is their flight. A typical fly has two flight wings on its thorax and a pair of halters. Flies also have large eyes with excellent wide angle vision. Houseflies are pretty annoying because they are always buzzing around and trying to eat our food. They can also spread disease too, so it's important to try to keep them out of your house. Good luck. Three, beetle. Beetles are the largest group of insects. 350,000 species of beetles have been identified, which makes up about 40% of all known insects. Wow. Beetles do not breathe and don't have blood. What? Then how do they live? Beetles have air holes called spiracles in the side of their body that lead to their trachea, which acts as lungs. And instead of blood, beetles have something like blood called hemolymph. It's green. Some common beetles are ground beetles, leaf beetles, longhorn beetles, weevils, scarab beetles, dung beetles, and rove beetles. So many beetles. Most beetles love to eat plants, and some eat animals. For people with crops and gardens, beetles can be a nuisance. Four, cockroach. This is the cockroach. I don't know about you, but the sight of this one grosses me out. The cockroaches are an ancient group dating back at least as far as 320 million years ago. There are over 4,000 species of cockroaches, and 30 of them are associated with human habitats. Cockroaches become adults in three to four months and can live up to one year. Cockroaches are among the hardiest insects. Some species are capable of remaining active for a month without food and are able to survive on limited resources. Some can go without air for 45 minutes. Cockroaches are abundant throughout the world and live in a wide range of environments, especially in the tropics and subtropics. Cockroaches can also withstand extremely cold temperatures, allowing them to live in the Arctic. Although considered gross in Western cultures, many places in the world like Mexico and Thailand eat cockroaches, 
In China, cockroaches are even used for medicine. Five, termite. These are termites. Termites like to eat wood, leaf litter, soil, and animal dung. Mmm. Their love for eating wood causes a major problem for humans because they enjoy feasting on our wooden buildings. Have you ever seen a house covered up by a big tent? That's usually an attempt to get rid of termites. Termites live in colonies. Colonies begin when winged termites, called allates, swarm and mate. After mating, they fall to the ground and rip their wings off. The female looks for a good place to start a colony, and the male follows her. Most termites nest underground their entire lives, but termites in Africa and Australia build big mound structures that look like little mountains. Some mounds can be over six meters tall. Termite colonies can contain several hundred termites to several million. They operate on self-organized systems that use swarm intelligence. By working together, they can get more food and build bigger habitats than they could on their own. A typical colony contains nymphs or adolescent termites, workers, soldiers, and termite parents, a king termite, and sometimes several egg-laying queens. Six, locust. Locust is a swarming phase of short-horned grasshoppers. What's this swarming phase? Well, normally these grasshoppers are solitary creatures, but when their environment becomes overcrowded, they respond by swarming. In the swarming phase, they change colors, eat more, and breed much more easily. The peskiest part about swarming is the grasshoppers move in large groups, groups of millions to billions of hoppers, and they destroy land by eating crops. I mean, they destroy lots and lots of land. Several groups of grasshoppers swarm as locusts throughout the world, except Antarctica and North America. The desert locust swarms throughout North Africa, the Middle East, and India. The migratory locust swarms Africa, Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. The Australian plague locust swarms Australia. North America surprisingly doesn't have locusts. In the past, it experienced a few groups of locusts, but they have all become extinct. Seven, fruit fly. These small flies are known as fruit flies. They like to feed on nectar and like to lay eggs on or near decaying fruit. They are pests and seriously contaminate human food. Many restaurants consider them the greatest pest of all because they can appear out of nowhere and breed very quickly. Have you ever left a piece of fruit out on a counter and then discovered small flies around it? That's them. Female fruit flies lay their eggs on the surface of rotting fruits and vegetables. Each female may lay up to 500 eggs. These eggs hatch into larvae, which molt twice before becoming fully grown. The larvae feed on rotting fruit and vegetables by turning their food into semi-liquid. When the full-grown larvae are ready to pupate, they leave the food for drier areas. Developing from larvae to adults takes about eight to 10 days. Mating takes place soon after adults emerge, usually within a few hours, and egg laying begins about 24 hours later. So when you see fruit flies, you gotta act fast to get them out of there. Eight, louse. Lice are flightless insects that live in hair. That's right, hair. That means they can live on your head. They are external parasites that like to live on birds and mammals. There are 3,000 species of lice. Three species are known as human lice. Lice live on their host by clinging to their hair. Lice are very tiny. On average, they are two to three millimeters, about the size of a sesame seed. They feed on skin, feather parts, and blood. They are usually pale in color, but become darker if they are feeding on blood. A louse egg is called a nit. Lice use special sticky saliva to attach an egg tightly to a hair. It is very difficult to detach an egg from hair. To remove lice eggs is called nitpicking. Usually, a closed tooth metal comb is used. Humans also have special shampoo to remove lice. Nine, stink bug. This is a stink bug. The family name is Pentatomidae. In Greek, penti means five and tamos means section. Their body looks like it has five sections. Can you see it? Stink bugs are considered pests because they eat a lot of crops, grow quickly into large populations and are resistant to many pesticides, meaning they're hard to get rid of. They are a threat to cotton, corn, soybeans, trees, shrubs, vines, weeds, and many cultivated crops. Many stink bugs pierce plants and suck the juice from the plants. They can also prey on insects smaller than them. 
More than 4,000 species of stink bugs live throughout the world, ranging from deserts to tropical swamps. In the tropics, they are very colorful. Most stink bugs in North America are pretty plain looking. The scent of stink bugs plays an important part in mating. Stink bugs rely on the scent to find one another. They also attract a partner with the use of sound. They will rub their legs together and produce a sound similar to grasshoppers. The female stink bug shows a great deal of care for her eggs and young, often never leaving their side until they've matured. That's pretty sweet to know, but they're still stinky pests. 10. Bed bugs. These are bed bugs. They are called bed bugs because they typically live in our beds. They also can be found hiding in places where humans spend a lot of time, like hotels, airplanes, and couches. Yuck. Bed bugs are small, flat, reddish brown bugs about the size of an apple seed. They are blood suckers and they love to feast on human blood. Yikes. They prefer feasting on humans because we don't have fur and there's more spots for these nasty bugs to bite us. Luckily, they don't spread disease, but their bites often become red, itchy welts. When bed bugs feed, they inject their saliva into your skin. The bed bug saliva has a special chemical that keeps blood from clotting, and also an anesthetic that prevents you from feeling the bite and swatting away the bed bug. These bugs like to hide in small cracks and crevices during the day and come out at night to feast. So watch out! 11. Dragonfly Dragonflies are flying insects who like to eat other flying insects. Specifically, they like to feed on mosquitoes, bees, flies, ants, and butterflies. They are found around lakes, ponds, streams, and wetlands. Even though they have six legs, they don't walk, only flight for these guys. Their larvae is known as nymphs and are aquatic. Most of a dragonfly's life is spent in nymph form. Depending on the dragonfly species, the larvae stage can last three months to five years. They live in the water and eat mosquito larvae. When a dragonfly is ready to enter its adult stage, the dragonfly will climb up a reed or emergent plant. The exposure to the air causes the dragonfly to breathe. The skin behind the larva's head splits and out emerges the adult dragonfly. It will spend the rest of its life flying around and eating flying insects. This stage lasts up to six months. Dragonflies have tremendous eyesight. Their large compound eyes wrap around the top of their head and have up to 50,000 individual lenses. As a result, they have a wide field of vision and can see almost everywhere at once. I don't know about you, but I like dragonflies. I think they're really neat looking and to see one is really special. I guess dragonflies are bigger pests to other flying insects than to humans. Like they're pests to mosquitoes and I don't like mosquitoes, they bite. You can learn more about mosquitoes from our video, 11 Interesting Insects. Have you seen it? You can watch it now. Or if you want to take a break from bugs, check out one of our other videos. What do you think about these 11 pesky bugs? Have you seen them crawling or flying around? Which one bothers you the most? Did we leave out a bug that gets on your nerves? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to Socratica Kids.